Again, we're excited to be here. Last week, Dr. Rappi talked about insulin resistance. And today he, as you can hopefully see on our screen here. Again, we're excited to be here. Last week, oh, Dr. Rappi talked okay. about insulin resistance. And, and so, <laughs> sorry, now we have an echo as well. Okay, awesome. So again, um, last week, Dr. Rappi talked about insulin resistance. And this week, we are, well, I should say Dr. Rappi is going into free yourself from the curse of insulin resistance. So super excited. Um, you know, anybody who has health issues, and I'm talking diabetes, heart issues, thyroid issues, gut issues, all kinds of issues. All kinds of issues. Any issues. Your shoes don't fit. There you go. <laughs> now I'm making a joke. I'm being a little silly. But insulin resistance, really, if you dig down into any of the most common chronic diseases out there, if you step back, 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 you're going to find insulin resistance is very well or could be very well the root cause of the underlying cause. So it's a huge problem out there and it needs to be addressed. If you don't fix insulin resistance, diet, exercise, supplements, um, fasting, all of that stuff, none of it will work for you because your body is in dysfunction, you've got insulin resistance, and so you can try all that stuff, it's never gonna help. You've gotta fix the root cause first. That's why we're talking about insulin resistance today. So please uh, share this with your friends. Um, let them know that we're on here live. Super excited. We're just going to wait for a few me for a few more people to join us. And I'm excited. We have a lot of great topics in May. We just kind of finished talking about them. It is Mother's Day month. We're going to be doing a lot of self care. In fact. Next week, next Tuesday, you're not going to want to miss this because we are talking about all of our infamous self-care tips. And then I'm even doing two free products of a giveaway. So super excited about that. Um, all right. So thanks again for being okay. here. <laughs> I'm going to let Dr. Rapp okay, take Okay, let me over. take over. Let me get comfortable here. Let me go. Oh, look how close it is. That's not good. That's a cosmetic surgeon's dream there. Okay, guys. You ready? So free yourself from the curse of insulin resistance. At the end, what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about um, what's going to happen next week. Uh, there's a lot of crazy information in the news right now. If you're following the news, I don't watch the news. I read, I read some other uh, reports and stuff. But the fact that the um, current administration is talking about reducing Animal-based protein, particularly red meat, to one hamburger a month should get all of us off of our couch and paying attention. So I'm going to do uh, a really strong presentation of a animal-based protein diet compared to um, plant-based diet at some point in the near future, hopefully uh, in the next month or so. But it's going to be really awesome, and so I really hope everybody has an opportunity at that time and so let's move forward with free yourself from the curse of insulin resistance. I'm going to review a little bit about last week. I personally take responsibility. I got the wrong slideshow up there and had some slides and didn't need to be there. But I'm going to review what is insulin resistance, how it has a negative impact on us, and how do we, we achieve what's called metabolic advantage. We always want to be in an advantage position, so we're going to go into that. So a little bit of review as we walk through this process here. So let's see, I got a clicker here that's not clicking. It says your screen is paused. Let's unpause that. Okay, try it again. Okay, give us one second here. Wow. Okay. <laughs> try it again, click it down there. Okay, everybody, give us one second here. So it's showing, I'm not sure if you can see our screen or not. We're gonna try this again. Can you see the screen? Yeah, okay. there we go. 
There. Okay, so there we go. So here we go again. Again, as I said last week, in my opinion, and a lots of opinions of functional medicine doctors out there, some of the some of the top guys around the world and researchers in insulin resistance and diabetes and whatnot, um, they're gonna they're gonna basically step in line and say the same thing. We're all on the same track. We all believe that insulin resistance is a root cause to a lot of things. So when we look at this, we're gonna look at stress and anxiety, people that have stress and anxiety, pre-diabetes, type two diabetes. Also, we're looking at thyroid dysfunction, autoimmune diseases, lots of autoimmune out there, depression. We see a lot of depression over the last year. People have really become depressed with what's going on is being locked down, forced to wear a mask, you can't go anywhere. And so lots of uh, bouts of depression. We also see high blood pressure which we can develop belly fat. We also have overweight. We're looking at high cholesterol is a big issue, fatty liver, PCOS, polycystic ovary syndrome and infertility. Then we're looking at um, early onsets of dementia and possibly pre-Alzheimer's disease, neuropathy, adrenal issues, inflammation is huge. And then hormone imbalance, and lastly, sugar addiction. For those of you who weren't on last week, sugar is the number one abused drug on the planet, and it's an addictive substance, and that's why so many people are hooked on it. It affects the hippocampus of the brain like any of the other drugs that we can become addicted to. So this really, this little chart really good. What's the true underlying cause for almost all of these that I presented you today? It's insulin resistance. So let's go back and review what exactly is insulin resistance. Well, insulin resistance is pretty simple. It's your body cells develop resistance to your own natural hormone called insulin, which is resulting in increase in blood sugar. So without reading the slide is this, I eat food, it converts to glucose, my pancreas dumps insulin. Insulin's job is to take glucose from the blood to the cell for energy. Over a period of time, where there's lots of different causes. The cell membrane becomes resistant to the insulin. So my sugar levels go up. It becomes more resistant. My sugar levels keep going up, more and more and more resistance. And then eventually we develop other chronic uh, diseases like the list that we just showed you, the circles around the blue. All right, so let's go in here. Let me show you the, the diagram I think is the best way to understand it. Repeated insulin spikes cause insulin resistance, and this is how it happens. I eat food that converts into glucose. My body dumps insulin, or my pancreas dumps insulin into the blood. So here's the cell membrane. Here's all the food that I just ate, and it broke down into sugar. Now look, insulin out of the pancreas goes, oh, Let's drag it to the cell and deliver my package, and it's used as energy. That's normal physiology. But when we have repeated spike, 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 spike of blood, blood sugar, glucose, up, 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 spike, 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 we're going to see insulin resistance develop at the cellular membrane, which means that when your insulin's trying to deliver the package of glucose, it gets blocked. The receptor sites don't allow it to do that. And that's when your blood sugar goes up. At some point down the road, your doctor will start to refer to it as pre-diabetes until your A1C number hits the magic 6.5. Then you've been declared a full-blown diabetic. And then they write you a prescription for more insulin. And that drives the insulin resistance up and therefore, we end up stacking up drugs over a period of time. And we see all the time people come to us, the diabetics that come to us, they may be on two or three medications, plus a couple of high blood pressure medications to take the pressure off the kidneys. And it's just this quagmire. So what we want to do is we want to eliminate the insulin resistance. And this is how we do it. We, in, we, we minimize the insulin resistance. And when we do that, we're going to lower our insulin levels, and that's going to put us in what's called the metabolic advantage. So we break down the insulin resistance so that your insulin can do its normal job, normal physiology, deliver sugar as energy to the cell. That puts us in a metabolic advantage. Okay? Very straightforward. So let's take a look at this slide here. Low insulin is positive. Keeping our insulin levels low all the time has a positive impact on every cell in the body. 
It's really important if you want to achieve optimum health and wellness. If you've already got some underlying issues like this blue circles that I showed at the beginning, if you're struggling with any of those or multiple of those, we've got to get your insulin in check and break down the resistance at the cellular level because we want to keep our insulin low. Let me just throw in a couple of little fun facts for those of you that are watching. When your insulin spikes and is elevated, it's going to suppress or push down your metabolism. When my insulin levels spike and I have high insulin levels, it's going to suppress my immune system. When insulin levels are high, it's also going to tell my body to store fat. So when we see people over the last year who've been cooped up at home, they haven't been able to go to the gym, they're not exercising, maybe they're they're soothing their discomfort and their, and their mental uh, feelings of not, not feeling good, basically, and they soothe themselves by eating foods that are bad for us, we're going to see this vicious cycle of insulin resistance being driven further and further down the road, and we've got to stop that. Those people are packing on weight. I had a lady in here just the other day, and she goes, I hardly ate anything in the last year, but I gained weight. Well, there's reasons why that's happening, Okay. But the key here is we've got to lower insulin and reduce and eliminate insulin resistance. When we do that, we develop the metabolic advantage, meaning low insulin, high metabolism, low insulin, increased immunity, low insulin, increased fat burning, low insulin, reduced inflammation. So all of the things that are good for us happen in a low insulin state. So we've got to develop that to be in a metabolic advantage. Let's look at some macronutrients. There's three big macronutrients that everyone should be aware of and understand. We've got proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. They're really important in everything we do on a daily basis with regards to nutrition and food intake. Humans largely uh, need large amounts of macronutrients. We have to have a specific amount of food to survive. Now, I mean, people can go without eating for three, four, five days. I know a lot of people that fast for up to a week every so many months. However, there's only two essential macronutrients, only two that we absolutely have to have to survive long term. And we'll talk about that right here. We've got essential, essential, key word, essential fatty acids essential amino acids come from animal-based proteins. And lastly, the amount of energy provided by the macronutrients varies. Fat gives us the most kilocalories of energy per gram. Okay, that's nine. So when we're in a starvation mode, your body's gonna hang on to fat because it thinks I'm gonna starve. And so it's gonna save as much fat as possible because there's more energy per gram than the other two macronutrients. So it's important to understand that. Next, which macronutrients are essential? You have to have them. Let's look at that. Proteins, you've got to have proteins. The building blocks of the human body are amino acids, which come from proteins. So an amino acid is this, and a protein is a bunch of those connected together like the old-fashioned hot dogs when I was a kid. They were you pull them out of the bag and they were all strung together. That's what a protein sequence chain is. It's amino acids put together. It's essential for growth and development, okay? For, for making of new cells, repairing of damaged tissue and whatnot. It's essential. You absolutely have to have amino acids coming from proteins. Next, we've got fats. There are essential fatty acids these fatty acids are humans must ingest because their body cannot synthesize them and the human body requires them for good health. We have to have good fats for our brain to function. Most people out there are unaware that cholesterol is incredibly important for brain function. We've all been told many, many times over again, it's been pushed by large interest groups that fats are bad, fats are bad, fats are bad. There was years Years ago, what they did is they pushed the no-fat, non-fat, no-fat diet. Everything in the grocery store was no-fat, low-fat, non-fat, and it made millions and millions of people sick. And the reason is because we've got to have fat in our diet to be healthy. And in particular, if you want to avoid uh, dementias and, and cognitive decline, you've got to maintain healthy fats for your brain so your brain can function normally. 
If your cholesterol is pushed too low using a statin drug because your doctor's panicked about your cholesterol, that, that, that those statin drugs can drive your cholesterol too low where you can literally develop dementia, you can stop producing sex hormones, and then you don't have the cellular repair that you should have with proper fat intake. So it's really important to understand that fats are really, really critical in a healthy diet. And lastly, we have the only one of the three that's not essential for human survival. There's no such thing as an essential carbohydrate. It does not exist. Your body does not have to have it. So there's, uh, again, there's no such thing as an essential carbohydrate. The human body doesn't need it to survive, period, end of story. So we've got proteins and fats are essential for human life. Carbohydrates are not. So macronutrients, uh, how they affect the blood sugar, that's really what we're going to be talking about today. And what we really want to do is help you to understand how do I keep my insulin as low as possible? When we see this slide here, carbohydrates, 100% of the carbs are going to enter your bloodstream or your blood sugar after eating them. It's about 15 grams of carbohydrates will raise your blood sugar levels in 15, 10 to 15 minutes they'll go up 50 to 60 mgs. So if you're a diabetic and you're testing your blood sugar, you fully understand this because you'll go, wow, my blood sugar really went up after I ate. Yeah. And so that's the problem with the carbs. It's immediate. Boom, blood sugar spike. Well, what happens? We know what happens with a blood sugar spike. Our insulin comes. We dump insulin into the blood to try to lower the blood sugar and use it as energy. And that's where we develop that resistance that I talked about at the very beginning. Now, proteins, what are the effect of proteins and fats have on the blood sugar? Proteins have minimal or no effect. If we were to go down the path, if you have some underlying issues, proteins may cause a slight elevation in blood sugar, but it's not what you think. Proteins are not going to convert into sugar. That doesn't happen. Fats also do not convert into sugar. So by eating proteins and fats, you're not going to get insulin. You're not going to get a sugar spike, keep our insulin as low as possible over the long haul. We've got to really control our protein and fat intake and making sure that if we're going to ingest carbs, it's going to be a minimal amount of carbs. And, and that's just, that's just physiology. That's just, there's no disputing that. Okay. It's in all the research out there. Now, this is just this is a nice little graph I put together that shows you glycemic index means how high your blood sugar is going to spike and then how long glycemic load is, how long does it last or does it take to come back to normal? So I'm going to put up here a number of food items that everybody can relate to, and you'll see why we're minimizing some of the foods that we eat, at least until we've eliminated the insulin resistance. Once we've gotten rid of it, we may bring some of this back in on a more frequent basis or use it as a treat item couple, once a week, that kind of stuff. But for the, for the meantime, this is things that we want to really be careful of. And I want to caution you, these things will elevate your blood sugar and give you huge insulin spikes. So first we've got corn, rice, white flour, and whole wheat. Those are things that we completely advocate. Do not eat those, period. We also have glucose. These are different sugars, glucose, sucrose, fructose, and honey. I hear this one a lot, but Dr. Rappi, fructose is all natural. I'm like, yeah, well, guess what? The research shows that it could be worse for you than any of the other sugars. So we don't advocate ad adding these in any way, shape, or form to our diet or our intake. And lastly, our starches, potatoes, beans, and brown rice. We see a lot of vegans and vegetarians that that love to profess with their chest out and their head held high. I eat beans. I get all the protein I want. Well, there's a lot of research to show that phytonutrients um, from, from vegetable sources can be uh, an issue for us, irritate the lining of our intestines, drive leaky gut syndrome. They don't give us the uh, essential amino acids we're looking for. And overall, they can increase our inflammatory state. So these two are high enough on the glycemic index where we don't advocate these unless you're far enough uh, along where you're using a, what I would refer to as a reward system 
because you've been good. So if you're good all week long on Saturday, you can treat yourself with an item. You might want to make a baked potato with your steak. Uh, you might want to have flour tortilla with some chicken wrapped in the middle, but it would happen occasionally at most, okay? And so this was a great chart just to show you that how some of the most common foods out there, particularly foods that we don't advocate, have such a detrimental effect. Remember, all of these that you're seeing on here are going to spike your insulin because they convert to glucose. They convert to glucose in a rapid fashion for the most part, and you're going to find yourself driving the insulin resistance to be stronger and stronger. And we want to reverse that as much as possible. So these are 14 foods that I've listed that you should avoid or cut out if you want to achieve metabolic advantage. Everybody on here, every person that I talk to, every client of mine, whether it's Cairo, whether it's decompression laser, I might be working on a neuropathy case. Um, they want to do the best they can at minimizing their insulin um, their insulin spikes and insulin resistance so they can become metabolically advantaged. So if we just look at this, we mentioned this already earlier, um, breads and grains, you're talking about one slice, 17 grams of carbs. That's huge. One gram, flour tortilla, 10 inch, 36 grams. I advocate 40 grams of carbs per day. Look at how easy it would be for you to blow past that. And again, if you blow past the number I'm advocating, you're going to be pushing yourself down the path of insulin resistance and then possibly developing any of those blue circles that were around there or making what you have already worse. So we're looking at cereals, oatmeal. I love this one. Steel cut oats are good for you, really. They still have 29 grams of carbs. So I don't care whether you cut it with a butter knife, a steel hatchet, or a, a plastic straw. They still drive your insulin spikes. They're going to drive insulin resistance. It's not okay. Whole grain cereals, 37 grams. For all of you out there, so I eat whole grain cereals. Well, guess what? You're spiking your insulin like crazy. Grape nuts, one of my favorite as a kid. I would never eat that again today unless it was a treat item. But that again, 46 grams. Oh, good old Yule Gibbons. Boy, he had great commercials. I'm dating myself now, right? Pastas. Huge, 43 grams, one cup of regular pasta. Beans and legumes, lentils, 40 grams. Peas, 25 grams. Black beans, 41 grams. Pinto beans, 45 grams. Chickpeas, holy smokes. If you're into eating hummus, then you're, you're, doing, you're going down the wrong trail. I'm just trying to save your life here, okay? Over on this side, we're looking at chips and crackers. You know, nine o'clock at night, you're kind of hungry. Rather than grab a protein snack or a fat bomb, you're snacking on something, wheat, whole wheat crackers, 19 grams of carbs in one ounce, which isn't very much. Starchy vegetables, corn, potatoes, sweet potatoes, beets and cooked, beets cooked. Now we advocate eating sweet potatoes on a limited basis. They're delicious. Yes, they've got some 24 grams of carbs in it. We don't advocate it all the time because we know what it does to our insulin and we don't want that. But if I was going to have a potato, it would be sweet potato over anything else. Sweet potato fries, same concept. Now, for those of you who want to have a nice adult beverage occasionally, um, a typical can of beer is going to have 13 grams of carbs. So we avoid drinking beer on a low-carb diet, right? Dry wine spirits are better uh, alcohol options. And lastly, down here, the gluten-free baked goods. Gluten-free breads and muffins can have, can have just as high of carbs as a traditional baked goods. So they also are often made of carb sources that raise your blood sugar really quickly. So what I would say, if you want a treat item, rather than pick a gluten-free donut, eat the real thing. Just do it. It's like somebody that says, uh, I, I don't have a heart condition, but I've just always thought maybe I should have decaf coffee. And I'm like, why would you ingest all those chemicals? They use chemicals to do that. Just water it down, half a cup and whatever you're going to do. And so gluten-free always doesn't mean gluten-free. Our personal opinion here at Thrive Functional Wellness Center is there's the vast majority of gluten-free products out there still have small amounts of gluten in them. So just be careful if you're gluten sensitive. If you're not gluten sensitive, gluten still drives Leaky gut syndrome, I believe we talked about that already. It affects the lining of the, the intestines, um, opening up the cells. 
what are called tight junctions, allowing toxic waste to leak into our bloodstream, leading to a whole host of other issues. So we don't want to keep adding issue on top of issue. But this is this is just a nice list of things that you should eliminate from your diet to move toward metabolic advantage. It takes time. I wouldn't suggest anybody go to cold turkey today. Start eliminating and set your, set your sights for a couple of weeks. It's very straightforward. Our programs are very geared toward walking you through the process. So you don't have to figure it out. We've already spent 30 years figuring it out for you. So it's really important to understand that. And Lori will talk a little bit about the programs we do in the office. Um, it, it's, it's just amazing what we're able to do for, with people. I failed to put a slide in here. Uh, let me see. Um, I, let me just share a story with you real quick. I had a client come to us a number of years ago. Um, and he was with his wife and she's crying. And I'm doing a consultation and he's got his arms crossed and he's got this stubborn look on his face. And I said, what's going on? He goes, I'm done. I just don't want to do this anymore. I'd rather just die. And I was like, wow, now I, why, I'm, I understand now why she's crying. She's like, don't let him die. So needless to say, they got on our program. When he came to see me, he was on two oral medications and multiple insulin injections a day. And his A1C was nine to 10, something like that. On all the medications, his doctor had been working with for 20 years, the same guy just kept stacking more and more insulin drugs on top of him and on top of him, full-blown diabetic. He's ready to give up. He goes through our program. Four months later, he's off of all of his drugs. Now, I don't, I don't take people off medications. That's not my license. I would never do that. He was able to get off his drugs with his doctor. When we finished the program and I ran a final lab to show him a comparative analysis, he took that to his doctor. His A1C was 5.4, normal. He was off all of his drugs. It was absolutely incredible. He had all these other marker changes too that were really good. But in this particular case, it was mainly that. Off his high blood pressure meds, trying to save his kidneys because he was on metformin. I mean, it was amazing. When he, when he met with his doctor, his doctor literally looking at his labs, got up and walked out of the room. Instead of asking him, what have you been doing? Who is this guy, Dr. Appy? What the heck is going on? I'd love to talk to him. I have so many clients, maybe they could help. That's how we should be working together. So we see those stories over and over and over again in our office. And so we want to achieve low insulin because it has a positive impact on every cell in our body. So whether you're dealing with any of what I showed in those circles, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, heart disease, any of these issues, prediabetes, diabetes, whatever it happens to be, you, a family member, a friend, a coworker, a neighbor, any of these people, we help these individuals with the programs we do. No one's talking about this. We need to walk them down a very specific path in order to achieve optimum health and wellness. And it's available to anybody who's willing to step forward and say, I need help. That's why we're here. So let's look at this. We want to achieve what's called the metabolic advantage. Incredible changes being made. Let's look at some changes. So this individual came in. And when we first saw them in January of 20, 2020 here, their uh, glucose was 322. That's fasting. And they were on a bunch of drugs. They were on a bunch of drugs already for their diabetes. So after working with them for four months, we retested them. Their blood sugar, fasting blood sugar was down to 122. There was a 63% improvement. Their hemoglobin A1C went from 13.2 down to 6.2, 56% improvement. They had reduced 75% of their medications and were on their path to get rid of all of them. Absolutely incredible. That same individual also, because remember, high blood sugar, High insulin, high blood sugar, insulin resistance. It literally was driving this person's um, cholesterol panel through the roof. Their triglycerides were crazy. Their, their cholesterol was super high and their LDLs were so high they couldn't even calculate them. So here's their lab. They came, same, same scenario. Here we go. They started in January and in June, five months later, they went from 106 down to 219. Huge improvement. That's like ridiculous. Okay. 
Remember, when I have elevated blood sugar for a longer period of time, my body's finally going to say, well, I don't know what to do with it. The insulin's telling me I should store it as fat. Some of it's going to get to the liver and your liver's just going to say, oh, the heck with it. I'm going to process it and convert it into triglycerides. That's why we see diabetics that are on medications that are just worse than they were when they started. Many times will have very high triglyceride numbers. In this individual's case, he was at 270, his cholesterol, and his cholesterol dropped to 175. No statin drugs, none. Absolutely incredible, all right? And then lastly, his, if you look at this, we had a 300% improvement in his LDL levels. That's how high it was. 300% improvement in LDLs, which stands for lousy cholesterol. So besides bringing his blood sugar down, reducing his inflammation, driving his immune system up so he's super strong, so he won't get the flu, we were able to lower his cholesterol levels, lower his inflammation, which really reduced the risk of heart attack and stroke, okay? Absolutely amazing. This is just an example of all the changes that we see on a regular basis. Remember, low insulin is our ultimate goal, okay? It's the key to optimum health and wellness. We've got to develop and we've got to maintain what's called the metabolic advantage. It's huge. Everybody can do it. You just need help. And that's what we're here for. That's why we're here. And that's what our programs are all geared toward. So um, next week, and I'm going to show you this slide. And I'm going to kind of turn it over to Lori. But next week, May 4th, we're going to do self-care tips. You need to take care of yourself. I'm just going to say it, ladies. You ladies, let me tell you, you guys are give, 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 do, do, do. You take care of your kids and your husband and your, oh my goodness, take care of you is going to help you achieve the metabolic advantage. It's important mentally, physically, spiritually. It's super important. And coming up in the, in the near, oh, we got some light change going on. It's almost like we had a, uh, like an eclipse or something, right? So uh, and in, in the uh, future, and by the way, I'm Dr. Rappi, not Lori Rappi. That's just one of those little things that we didn't fix. But uh, we've got some incredible things coming up in the near future, meditations, all kinds of great stuff. It's going to be amazing. Next week with this self-care tips, we're going to be providing a couple of giveaways, some sleep supplements and some beauty serum. Yes, I use beauty counter myself. Can't you tell? Look at me, right? And so it's really important. So next week is going to be fantastic. And I am going to, I think maybe I should just get up and let Lori sit here. It's a lot more comfortable than leaning sideways on a stool. Now, hold on, guys. Here we go. Thank you for paying attention. I hope it was wonderful. I try to give out easy, simple information that we can all absorb and process. If you have any questions, make sure you send, make sure you send them in to me. All right, here we go. All right, everybody. I think that was a lot of great information um, from Dr. Rappi. If you have, I can see the comments. If you have any quick questions, um, I know that this one went a little longer, but there is so much great information to share. And again, at Thrive Functional Wellness Center, we offer um, wellness programs and they're all customized to you. So again, if you know anybody who has these health issues, have them contact us, very, very important. But as you can see by this slide here, so excited because next week we're going to be talking about self-care tips, everything you want to know. We're going to be sharing a lot of our secrets that we talk to our wellness people about. And let me show you too. We are doing a giveaway. This is so cool. Can you see that? This is a supplement, Alpha Theta Ultra PM, that is amazing. This helps for any of those people who wake up around one, two o'clock and can't go back to sleep, this is for you. Helps to naturally balance your cortisol. Amazing product. We're gonna be giving that away. You do have to be on live to win. And then one of my favorite, if you can see this vitamin C serum um, from Beauty Counter. I use this every day, phenomenal product. This is worth around $80. And we're gonna be giving this away too because we really want to talk about self-care and there's so many topics about self-care. So, and we have a lot of great topics in May. Um, we are going to go back to our other platform of not using Zoom. So thank you everybody who was patient with us as we tried something new. 
Well, Dr. Rappi had so many amazing slides that he wanted to share, so this worked out really well. Um, so thank you again for joining us. We come live every Tuesday at 4.30 um, right here, Facebook. If you have a topic, if you have something you'd like to hear us talk about, just put it down below in the comments. Um, you can send us a message. Um, we have great information. You go over to our website. Um, you can actually get a free discovery call with me because I am the clinic director. I am a functional wellness coach. Um, and we can talk about what you need. So again, have a fantastic week. It's the last week of the month, which is pretty amazing. And we look forward to seeing you next week. All right. Bye, everybody.